Hey YouTube. So I got another uh, scenario at a place I tested long ago. I haven't tested it on this version yet. It's a, uh, basically a five-way stop. Here it is on the map. I've got a stop sign this way, 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 and a divided road here. Uh, this is the drawbridge that you've seen me uh, film before. The issue with this intersection is that the stop line for the stop sign on this primary uh, left turn is too far back to clearly see the, the lane. Um, so I've got a, a, a drone operator um, shooting some footage to try to give you some perspective from uh, an angle where uh, you can see the on, in the oncoming traffic and possibly also uh, see how the car handles checking for visibility. So let's see how this goes. We'll do a few runs. Okay, it was going too fast for me to check that clear. It was just going for it basically from back uh, at the stop line. Um, a little bit too aggressive there. Didn't have any oncoming traffic necessarily to deal with, but it, it went for it before I had any visibility, uh, much less do I think the car had any. Uh, let's set that up and try it again. Okay, here's take three. This time I had a lead car, just so you can kind of see how another car does it. They stop, they creep, they stop right about there, and then we, okay, so the stop here is correct, and then now it's creeping. Uh, well, actually, it's not creeping at the moment. I guess it's looking at that other car. It's starting to creep a little bit more this time, but I feel like it's looking at that car this time. Let's see what happens. It doesn't say it's creeping this time, but, it, okay, it acted like it was going to go for it, and then that car was right in front of it, and it slowed for it. So that, it, it did at that time, but in that scenario, I think that it basically lucked out <laughs> because the car that it needed to see uh, was right in front of it. Um, it's a little difficult to set up the traffic, you know, engagements just right. But if you see, here I am coming up at the other intersection. And this is the visibility that the car needs to have in order to clear the lane. So that's what I'm talking about when we're saying um, it needs to come up so it can see down the lane that it knows it needs to cross. Let's try that again. Okay, here we are again. I don't think we're going to have any traffic intersection for this because the drawbridge just went up. My son just gave me the indication of that. But let's just see how it handles the no traffic scenario. So here it is, it's 11, 10, okay, right there. So that, it was going for it with 12 miles an hour without taking a look to the left. So I've reported this, and I'll just start hitting this a couple times, you know, so you guys can see me report it. This, this scenario was reported back on version seven and version eight. Um, I don't know if you can see in the distance, the drawbridge went up, which of course affects the traffic um, that I'm using to interact with a little bit. But we may have gotten a pretty good sense of, of how um, it looks this direction. I'm gonna try it from a little bit less uh, different intersection uh, over here to the left and we'll try again. Okay, this is the opposite side of that same intersection and I gotta look across into the left for traffic. It's not quite as blind. Um, because you can see the stop line is much closer to the road here. So I can kind of see directly. Uh, the oncoming traffic from the right is a little bit blind. That's the direction that we've been looking at before. So here it's actually creeping correctly. And then now it's proceeding and then into this side of the road. So that side, it did pretty pretty good. So the obviously road design is an important part of this. And I know I'm gonna get some comments on this video that say that this is an absurd intersection. And I agree, 
it is an absolutely absurd intersection but life is absurd and this scenario exists in my neighborhood i didn't have to go very far to find this um, and the important thing is that we're giving scenarios for the neural networks to look at and understand and the flaw that I think I want to highlight here is I'm not confident right now that the car is clearing the left traffic before it makes the commit to go. Um, and I think that opposite side of the intersection worked pretty good to show that. Let me set this uh, other direction up again and we'll try it again. All right, here we go again from the opposite side. Uh, stop sign is obscured right now if you see, but it knows it's stopping. And now the stop sign came into view. Um, Stopping for traffic control. Now we do have two cars here that are both blue. Interestingly, I'm still trying to figure out what blue cars mean. Um, they're blue at different times and different reasons. He's turning left, I'm turning left. It's creeping, checking for visibility. It can see fine right now. And now it should proceed. And it's drawing this median okay and did a good job. So that was a pretty good, uh, actually a visualization of the blue cars that uh, right now are somewhat of a mystery. Um, and I think it also shows that when the visibility is good and the stop line is in the right spot, the, the car does the right thing by creeping a little bit. I think on that other intersection, the vision system doesn't even think that road exists, even though the map system shows it. So this might be another one of those examples where the vision and the map data are fused, but not necessarily fused in a way that it's using the best parts of both at, at all times. All right, I just want to give a quick summary um, of what we saw with these turns. Um, I think I had a little bit of a camera snafu on, on, I think, the second run. I apologize for that. Hopefully, I can make it work in post um, so we can see something. In any case, stand by for that. Um, so what I'm trying to show here is that I, I'm not getting the sense that it's always looking down the lane of traffic before it gives the commit speed. Uh, while in some scenarios, if it sees something right in front of it, it definitely seems to yield and check, but it, it, it hit an intersection with, you know, 10 to, I think that one time we saw 13 miles an hour of speed um, as the cameras are coming into view, which just doesn't give me, first of all, as a safety observer, you know, any time to react if there is a car barreling by at 35 or even more than that if they're breaking the speed limit miles an hour. Um, but on, on streets where, you know, the stop line is in a good spot and it just has to do uh, two or three feet of creeping, it seems to kind of get the gist of the, the activity. Um, you know, stop, can't see, creep forward a little bit, and then we'll go. Um, so I don't know what it takes, you know, for a car to see a road on a map and then draw it here visually and then realize that the camera over here by my head, can it see down the road to the left and or right, but most importantly the left because that's the immediate concern when you're crossing a street in the United States. So anyway, that's what I was trying to show. I know that intersection with those stop signs is, is kind of absurd with the way it was it's drawn, but it uh, you know it's kind of the way some funny intersections that evolved from buggy trailers and roads and, and you know hundreds of years later, next thing you know they're paved and they're just as crazy as they were a long time ago. Uh, and I don't know if that's the case with that intersection, but it, some of these old old neighborhoods have streets like that. In any case, um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you appreciate these videos, you know, I, I love the insights. Uh, we saw a few more blue cars. If anybody's got any ideas, you know, I've heard a, a couple good theories that I like. Um, anyway, let, let's keep uh, working on it. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.